one. In this tutorial, we will go over one open source project for creating audio in Python. The music generated is very simple. However, it illustrates some principles. The first principle is creating notes. The second involves organizing them in musical scores. Two. This is the Python home page. It describes the project and you may download it on this page, if you wish, in a compressed format. However, there is another method. 3. If we go to this web address, jithub.com slash doage slash pysynth, we can see a list of files. Click on pysynth py. 4. It will show the Python code. In the upper right you can see the word draw. Then you may right click on raw. 5. After right clicking on raw, we get the menu, and we choose option for saving link as, and then we can save the file to our computer. 6. This is the folder with the new file, ipython code, and with the default file name, pysynthpy. 7. In the anaconda command prompt, I type cdc backslash ep, and press tab, it will auto-complete, as I only have one folder, that begins with those three letters. 8. Then after typing in the anaconda command prompt the command to start ipython, I create a bookmark. A bookmark is basically an alias to the current directory, which happens to be c backslash ipython code. The bookmark's name, for the example, is PYCODE. 9. I quit the IPython shell and start new one. It starts at the directory where Anaconda is located. Then I change directory that is CD to PYCODE. I verify with PWD command. 10. In future sessions, you will only have to type CD and then press either the up arrow or down arrow to see history of commands that start with those two letters. Since most probably you will have few such commands, it will find the correct one quickly. 11. Since I am in the directory with the pysynth py file, I can execute it using the percentron command. I show the first few lines of output. 12. This shows the music files which were created. 13. I will go into the Python code of this program later. This program is 285 lines. The actual code is less because there is a lot of empty lines, comments, and print lines. The print lines are only useful in showing what is happening. 14. I use the audio program Audacity. Here I will select a portion of the audio which happens to be the C5 note. 15. The reason that I know that this is C5 is because the notes in this song are the scale, C4, D4, E4, F4, G4, A4, B4 and C5 all notes are quarter notes except for the last, which is a half note. You can see from the time signal it is twice the size of a previous note, and there is a whole rest after C5. 16. For the selected audio, this is the frequency spectrum. This shows that it is a sum of three sine waves. The waves happen to be at these frequencies, C5, 253 Hz, C6, 2 times 253 Hz, and C7, 4 times 253 Hz. 17. This program used additive synthesis, as one note is composed of a few waveforms. Real audio signals will be composed of all frequencies. 18. Since real audio is composed of many frequencies, sometimes it is better to start with a signal that already has many harmonics such as the square wave. Then we subtract some frequencies using filtering. 19. Also we can use sample data. Actually this happens to be the most common way, as it results in the most realistic sounds. 20. 
Some math is necessary to understand how waves are composed from simple sine waves. 21. First I will go over the wave file format, and how to write it using Python, after describing Python in general, and then the Python program, PySynthPy, I will start some math for audio processing. 22. You may go to pythonaudio.blogspot.com to see the slides. To see a larger image of the slide, you can click on them at that page, which provides easy navigation controls. The audio for the text of the slides as well as any relevant source code is also on that page, 